So I had a couple Neves come in for uh, recapping service. I figured I would make a short video on the process of it. This is not by any means an instructional. If you came here hoping for a guide on how to recap your own Neves, um, please do not expect that and please do not attempt that. Um, not only are these getting extremely rare and expensive, but they are, you know, very old. They're, you know, historical artifacts at this point and not to be, you know, a gatekeeper by any means, but it's just, it's not worth it to attempt to do this if you're not very comfortable working on vintage equipment. These are getting up to, you know, $10,000 at this point. So just be aware that any damage you cause could be, you know, very, very expensive um, to bring to a tech at the end of the day. So you should just, you know, buy once, cry once is the saying. So um, I'm going to be replacing all these electrolytics here. Um, there's a few on these cards, a few on the mainframe. What I'm not going to be doing, I'm not going to replace any of these tantalums. Um, these are just going to stay how they are. They have a little bit longer of a life cycle than the electrolytics, so if they're not a problem, just leave them how they are. So what you're seeing me do right now is um, remove some of these larger capacitors that have been put in. Um, there's a few thousand U's that I remove. 1000U25 volts, if I remember correctly, and replaced with the same um, same rated capacitors, just new biches, uh, very high quality capacitors. Axial, um, everything I use is axial for this recap because everything I removed was axial. Uh, not to say that I don't use radials sometimes um, in place of axials because axials are difficult to find in the proper values occasionally and uh, you know usually more expensive. So sometimes I do use radials instead of axials. I just bend the, the leads properly and um, place them in ways where they're not going to interfere with putting the boards in and out, things like that. But for this repair, because of what we are working on, I did you know make sure I got the best capacitors I could find and the ones that would fit just like the original ones did. So I am taking note of which direction these capacitors were installed in. They are polarized and the way they are put back in, it does matter. Um, in fact, later on in this video, I do find some that the previous person had installed backwards and, you know, affected the circuit negatively for however many years that these have been in it. Um, I caught it kind of last minute. Um, I had to reference the schematic. To make sure because I have I recapped two of these units and um, one of them had caps one way and the other one had caps a different way and it was uh, I couldn't rely on the previous job anymore so I had to go back and reference the schematic and make sure that things were the proper way but um, in a in general as a rule you should really be referencing the schematic unless you're sure that they are original from the factory and even then sometimes there's problems. I recall a repair I did a long time ago that you know I kind of traced a circuit for quite a while much longer than I should have to be honest and um, eventually I found that it was missing a resistor and when I looked at the pads um, the pads had no solder on them so it came from the factory like that not working properly so every you know occasionally you'll run into a pair like that but for the most part you can trust that if it's all original, it was working correctly um, the way it left the factory. But these things do happen, so it doesn't hurt to reference the schematic occasionally. Um, I don't show a video of me doing that. That's just something that I found later on. But um, you should always make sure to either take photographs or you can even mark the circuit board which direction the capacitors were going when you pulled them out to replace them.
So working on some of these cards, I'm going to be desoldering some of these pads with a desoldering iron. People use solder wick, they use solder suckers, but this is by far the most efficient and convenient for techs. Um, I invested in one of these not too long ago, um, and it has just been money in the bank, in my opinion. Uh, makes for much faster repairs for people, and therefore, you know, less cost for them and um, quicker turnaround. So it's uh, really a great situation if you can afford to have a desoldering iron. If you are a tech or you're a hobbyist that work on a decent amount of circuit boards, look into the Hako uh, desoldering iron. It's about 300 bucks. Probably the cheapest one I can recommend. It might sound expensive, but it really will pay for itself um, within a year if you do a decent amount of these. If you do happen to be using a desoldering iron, I like to wiggle my capacitors or components while I'm desoldering to kind of make the lead move around in the via. It helps some of that solder come out and um, it keeps it from, you know, getting attached or caught up if some of it remains and cools down. Um, just keeping it mobile like that will keep it from becoming fixed into the via and remains easy to remove once you stop, you know, stop applying heat to it. I also wiggle the soldering nozzle itself around the um, leads to help clear away some of that solder from the pads.
there was the door again, and just as she was made bound, the three men entered. Draw the lance, they cried. We have been good to each other. What have you not put to? I come to you, my butler, in respect. I said, under no circumstances, tolerate either these treacherously mispronounced words. Is all sin and jealousy in your existence? Here I'm just bending the leads with a set of pliers uh, and kind of approximating the lead spacing, but. If I was to be doing a lot of these, I probably would be measuring the lead spacing and bending them with reference to something so that they're all pretty uniform, but I only, done, only ended up doing about, you know, two of these cards, so I just kind of approximated the distance, bent the leads, put them in, and soldered them. Um, for this video, I'm using, you know, about 700 degrees for my soldering iron, I think. I like using soldering irons as hot as possible. Um, it melts the solder much quicker and it's kind of like paradoxical, but it allows for less heat to transfer to the card itself, causing less damage and less trace lifting and stuff. The reason for that is because of it's so much hotter, um, it doesn't allow the circuit time to heat up like things around what you're soldering doesn't get time to heat up as much as it would if you used a lower temperature, but had to keep the iron in place for longer. Um, so this allows you to kind of work a little bit faster and keep control of the heat better. Um, obviously this comes with experience. If you were not as experienced, I would probably recommend you use a lower temperature for a little while, but I would also recommend you not be um, practicing on $10,000 modules, you know, so. So here's something I was talking about earlier. Two of these capacitors are installed backwards. Um, and luckily this has indicators on the board in the silk screen saying which side is positive and which is negative. Uh, I noticed it after I remove all the capacitors and you'll see kind of like a cut in the video where I stop and then the camera moves, I start again. Um, that's because I wanted to make sure that the silk screen wasn't wrong and uh, make sure that I install capacitors the correct way. But yeah, they follow the silk screen properly. Somebody um, just got complacent with their assembly line technique or whatever happened that made them install two of these backwards. Sometimes it happens, but as a tech, you should be a little bit more vigilant of uh, checking these things. <laughs> Mm. 
New South Wales Health Heavenly. The centre tube must be stolen. A structural integrity alarm began to ring out, then a critical oxygen level warning. I found the door mm. tired. A door by door from chair legs, I raced in. I found myself in a bamboo cell of lightness, of marble, of opulent thrones and paupered straw beds. Probably just a projection of a high resolution one. On cracked brick walls hung paintings so expensive I'd never seen those colours of me before. What is this? I whispered. My quarters, my friend said. Keep your head or cry. I walked from no direction, forward, if that was forward, passing frozen facsimiles of churches holding mass, rogue devotees prostrating before fallen prophets. I passed great Devotees prostrated in the ocean too, as they wore white coats and medals about their necks. These are your quarters, I said. Just so, he replied. What I do takes a certain clarity of mind, let's say. I am afforded affordances for that. In the far distance, fluttered nests of figures and planetary flowers.
rushing out of ventilation control halfway through the procedure. How lucky then for that damn room. You're out of your mind, I said. I must be a professor. Some things are beyond professors. Nothing is, he said. War lasted more than 400 years. In the ancient planet, yet the inhabitants worship a bronze centaur, forever pacified by the thought of his return. And they are happy for that. Walk lighted here 700 years in the ancient planet, yet the inhabitants only worship themselves. Cities of mirrors they can barely tear themselves from, and there's no time for war or uprising, and they are happy for that. I did these things, manufactured a stillness for their hearts, but a torture accompanied it, a stillness that I could not believe. As an author barred from reading his own work, it was too much, their stupid smiling faces, their opiate bliss. It's a wonder you don't all go mad from joy with the marital pit. So here you can see... The thing I was talking about a minute ago where uh, I go to put the capacitor back in the same way I had taken one out and realize that the silk screen indicates the opposite polarity. So I take a second and kind of reference another card I have out and I still don't think that's right. So I check the schematic. I take a break. I check the schematic and confirm that the silk screen is correct. So I here we are. Another shot um, of me putting the capacitors in the proper direction as indicated by the silk screen and the schematic. Here's a little capacitor that kind of snuck under the radar for me, but I noticed it as I pulled the two caps out um, and replaced it. This is another one where one of these channels had it installed backwards. So again, I had to break out the schematic and just double check that it was going in properly. So again, if you're a tech, just always kind of have it in your mind that the person that was in there before you might not have been doing what they were supposed to be doing. Not to throw anybody under the bus, I'm sure this person is a very good tech. But things do happen. People do make mistakes. And something like this, obviously, it didn't affect the unit enough to be a huge red flag when they tested it. When the people that owned it were using it, they didn't notice anything extremely wrong with it. But it is, you know, not how it was designed to be. So you always want to have it as close to design as possible. That makes it easiest to troubleshoot if a problem does arise. If not for you, but for the next tech down the line, that's a big deal. Um, any sort of time that something has been modified or changed, it can make for a little bit of head scratching for somebody if they're not as familiar with the units or they don't have access to schematics or anything like that. It just, it's best to keep things easy for the next guy because that's how you would want it to come to you. Um, if not just for the person that owns it to have it as close to new as possible. And as accurate to how it was designed as possible is really the goal.
One quick thing, um, I usually try to keep the negative side the longer of the two if there has to be, um, just usually because this goes to ground, so any sort of RF that gets on it is just going to get grounded out, but there you go, Neve 1073 recap, ready to go back to the owner. Thanks for watching, Thanks for watching and please like and subscribe. I'm going to be trying to make more videos like this in the future on repairs and refurbishment, so look out for those. Thank you.